start off today's episode, I'm over here at the witch farm again. And I've made a little bit of progress in between episodes. I've done a little bit more digging here, but you can't really tell. So I've dug down about 8 more layers. And even though it doesn't look like much, that is about 80,000 blocks. So it's quite a lot of time to dig all of that, it just doesn't look like I've made much progress. And I'm actually about halfway done now. So I'm down to Y level 35. And I'm off all of the way down to bedrock, which is at Y level 5. So another 30 blocks to go, or another 30 layers to go. And I've dug down about 30 layers so far. So there is still a lot more progress to make, but I'm getting there slowly. And hopefully I'll be able to dig all of it out in the next few weeks. And you can see over here that I've gone through quite a few of the pickaxes again. I mended all of these in the last episode. And I'm going to have to go back over to the gold farm to mend them later on. And I keep getting messages over on TikTok saying that because I'm on Bedrock Edition, I don't need to dig all of this perimeter. And I know that I don't have to dig this, I could just stay AFK up in the sky. And that would mean that the farm is really efficient anyway. But there's a few reasons why I decided to dig all of this area out instead of just staying AFK up in the sky. Then the first reason is because I think it's going to look good when it's done. The second reason is because I thought it would be a good idea to have the witch farm there and then on all of the other sides I could build a different farm. So I don't want to build hostile mob farms because they will take up the mob cap and it's just started draining like it always does when I try to record. But maybe I could build some passive mob farms on the other side. I'm not really sure yet, it's going to be a big project that's going to take me a long time. I'll definitely come up with some ideas. And the other reason why I've decided to dig all of this area out here is just to stock up on loads of the different materials. So I'll get a lot of granite and andesite, the gravel is useful for concrete, and I'll also get a lot of ores, this should be enough coal to last me the entire series. I don't really need the iron, but once I've started digging down a little bit more I'll start to find lapis and diamonds, so that's going to be quite useful. But those are the main reasons why I've decided to dig this place out. I don't really mind grinding and doing big digging projects like this. If you have haste 2 beacons set up and efficiency 5 pickaxes, it's actually quite fun to insta mine all of the stone. And one more thing that I quickly want to mention before I move on, is that I've not been storing any of the stone anymore. So if you look in this chest here, all of the shulkers are full of like granite, gravel, diorite and dirt and stuff like that. I just stopped storing all of the stone. So I've just been throwing it away and it's been despawning. And if you remember in the last episode, I was going to do some villager trading. So I'm quickly going to head over to the villager trading hall. So right at the end of the last episode, I came over here. And I got a zombie inside of this minecart. And he's actually dead now. Um, I had my fawn's armor on and he hit me a few times. And he ended up dying, so I do need to go and get another one. But the reason I got him down here was so I could get some cheaper trades from some of the villagers. So this guy right here was selling me mending for 10 and I converted him into a zombie villager by letting the zombie kill him and then I converted him back with a weakness potion and a golden apple and now he's offering me mending for one emerald and a book. I don't really need the mending, I've got quite a lot of it in here. I've actually got some more up in the storage room but there's definitely some of the other trades that I could do with getting a little bit cheaper. But the main reason I got the zombie down here was because I wanted to convert all of these stone masons into zombie villagers and turn them back and I had to do that a few times but if you look over here at this one he's offering me um, one emerald for one stone I think it's the same with this other guy as well yeah, one emerald for one stone so my plan was to bring all of the stone over from the witch farm project and there was loads of it I think I had a full double chest full of shulker boxes and all of them were just full of stone. So instead of converting all of these guys to get cheaper stone trades, I think it's going to be a better idea to convert most of the villagers over here to get cheaper book trades, then also these guys to get cheaper golden carrot trades and stuff like that. And then I think a few of these have already been converted. So look at this guy, he's offering uh, one emerald for a diamond hoe. And I think that's just because he was in the range of this guy when I was getting the cheaper trades from him. This guy here is offering one emerald for a diamond axe. This guy's probably got cheaper trades as well. Uh, one emerald for a diamond shovel. And this guy here is one emerald for a diamond chest plate. 
So I can already get most of the stuff for pretty cheap. And if I go over here, I've got a lot of emeralds. So I don't really need the cheaper trades. So I think what I'm going to do is just convert some of the people around here instead of all of the stonemasons. Because it was taking way too long to trade all of the stone and I wasn't really getting that many emeralds back for it anyway. But while I was trading with these guys, I was doing a few of the quartz trades. So I've got nine of them here. Uh, six of them give me the normal quartz blocks like this guy here. And then some of them give the quartz pillars. So this guy right here gives one emerald for the quartz pillar. So I've just been trading for some of the normal quartz. And this is how many I managed to get. So it's about seven stacks. And that's going to be quite useful for something that I want to do next. So before I get on with what I want to do at the start of today's episode. I just want to quickly show this over here. So last night I was just doing a little bit of work with some bees. I've never really played around with them before. I don't really know the mechanics or how they work exactly. But I think I've learned a little bit about them. So the bees have a hive here. And I've actually got one over there as well. And they come out to pollinate the flowers. Then they go back over to the hive. And then they produce some honey. So you can see the honey dripping out here. And I can actually just claim this without the bees getting angry. And that's because there's a campfire underneath. So from doing that I get a bottle of honey. And then if I go over to the other one and use some shears instead of a bottle. You can see that this one's got honey flowing out as well. And I can get some honeycomb. You can see it's actually gone on top this time. So you get free honeycomb if you use some shears. You can use this honeycomb to make some beehives as well. So six plants and three honeycomb makes a beehive just like this. And I'm going to need quite a few of these to make a bee farm. But I'm not going to be doing that in this episode. I'll probably do it in the next one. Uh, maybe the episode after. You can see I've got a few in here. And I've also got three over here as well. And these ones in this chest have all got three bees inside. So I'm going to have to get about 20 of these beehives. And every one of them needs to have three bees inside. And the way I've been doing this is over here. I've got a little bit of a setup. So I've got two bees over here on a fence post using some leads. And these are just too far away that they can't get into this hive here. So what I do is breed these two up. So even though they're on leads, you can still breed them. And then it produces a baby. So when the baby comes out, it will start pollinating the flowers. And it will become a part of this hive. So once it's pollinated this, it will probably fly into there. So you can see it got pollinated and then it flew straight into the hive. And I think there's actually another one in there as well. So I think there's two in there at the moment. So to get a third one, I just need to go and breed these guys again. But you have to wait like two or three minutes before you can do it again. So that's the way I've been getting the um, beehives with three bees inside. There probably is easier ways to do this. But like I said, it's the first time I've ever done any work with bees. And I was just trying to figure it out by myself. Uh, this is what I came up with and it seems to be working so far. But anyway, I'm going to leave this for now. Uh, I'll probably come back to it a few times this week and do a little bit more work. And hopefully by next episode I can get 20 of these beehives that are all just full of bees. And then I can build a bee farm in the next episode. So now I can get on with what I want to do in today's video. And you might remember the last one where I checked off two more chests off the checklist. So the first one was the redstone chest. I collected all of these items. And the other one was the blocks chest over here. I collected all of these as well. I also collected a few other items like all of the different colours of glass and then a few of the different plants as well. So I made quite a lot of progress towards the checklist in the last episode but there was two more chests that I wanted to check off but I just kind of ran out of time. So the first one was the nether chest. I managed to get a lot of these items but I ran out of quartz so that's why I collected some of the quartz from the villagers in between episodes. Uh, I also needed the gilded blackstone. So I am going to have to head to the nether to collect some of this. And I also need to collect the Nylium. And then in the nether wood chest I need to collect all of these items as well. So it shouldn't be too hard to get all of these. So to start off the episode I am going to head to the nether. I am going to try to collect every single item for both of these chests. Then I can check both of these chests off the checklist as well. And I think the best way to do that is probably in a time lapse.
So that didn't take too long at all. And luckily I already had quite a lot of this crimson wood from when I was making a ghast farm. I had to clear quite a lot of these trees. So I had a lot of that in the storage room already. But I had to spend a little bit of time collecting the warped wood. You can see that I've got it all now. Plus all of the mushrooms and the vines and everything else. And I'm not entirely sure why, but for some reason there is these never sprouts. So these look like all of the warp stuff. But there's nothing like that for the crimson stuff. So I'm not entirely sure if I've missed an item, but I don't think I have. So I think this is all of the stuff that I wanted to put in this chest. And the never chest was a little bit easier to complete. So I just had to get a few quartz from the villagers. The nylium took a few seconds to collect. Um, the nether quartz here, I just had to go get a couple of veins in the nether. And then the gilded blackstone, I had to go to a few different bastions. But luckily I already had a little bit of that up in the storage room anyway. So if you remember when I built the ghast farm, I actually had to destroy a bastion. So I ended up getting a little bit of that from when I did that. But anyway, you can see that I've turned the lights on now. So that's another two chests that are fully completed. And I think that's 14 lights that I turned on overall. So we're making some decent progress and I think I can actually check off another chest in this episode and that is the lighting chest. So you can see that I've already got quite a few of the items in here. Um, the redstone lamps I've got all of the stuff to craft and I've actually got the shroom lights right here so I'm going to check them off now. Also the lanterns here and the soul torches are all going to be pretty easy to craft. So the only thing that I don't have at the moment is the jack-o'-lanterns. And that's why in today's episode I'm going to be building a pumpkin farm. I'll also be able to check off a few items over here like the carved pumpkins, um, the pumpkin seeds, the pumpkins and then all of the melon stuff as well. Uh, I think that's all of the items and maybe some more that I'm missing. I got some materials together here. I think this is everything that I'm going to need. Uh, this is just the stuff for the pumpkin farm. I will come back later on and get some stuff for the melon farm as well. But what I'm going to do for now is just break this and I'm going to head over to the farming district. I found a place to build it here. It's just going to go next to the sheep farm. And it's going to be quite a compact design. I just came up with it myself last night. It's quite simple though, so someone's probably already come up with the same design before. I'm not really sure. It is only going to be a small design though, and I'm just going to get started straight away. So I've dug out a two hole here. And this is where the chest is going to go. So there's only going to be one chest for the pumpkins and then there's going to be one chest on that side for the melons. So I've got a hopper going into the chest and I'm just going to replace some of the dirt around it for some orange concrete. Now you don't really need to do this, I'm just trying to make it look a little bit nicer. So next up I can place where the pumpkins are going to grow. So I'm going to place one block right here behind the hopper and I'm going to count out by eight blocks. So this block doesn't count, so this is one, two, three, four five six seven and then eight where this torch is and now I can just do the same on the other side so one two three four five six seven eight I'm also just going to destroy the blocks in front of this and then place some orange concrete again you don't really need to do this but I just don't want to have the dirt underneath the water stream so I'm going to replace it with orange concrete instead so next I'm just going to build up a little bit with the orange concrete and this is to stop the water from getting out I'm going to place a water source there and it's going to go all the way to the middle and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So this is where all of the pumpkins are going to drop down into this water stream and then they're all going to get pushed into the hopper and go into the chest in the middle. So I'm just placing some temporary blocks in here. Uh, this is so I can place the pistons easier. So I'm going to get the pistons out and I'm going to place one directly in the middle right there. And then I'm going to leave a one block gap in between all of them just like this. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So there should be a piston right on the end block on this side. And then a piston right on the end block on this side as well. I can remove all these blocks now. They were just there so I could place the pistons. Now you can hurt all of the land in between the pistons. So not directly in front but just to the side here. So I'm going to hurt all of these up to here. And then of course this is where you want to plant the pumpkins. Or the melons if you're building a melon farm. So there's eight on each row, which isn't too bad. It's not the biggest farm ever, but it should produce quite a lot of pumpkins over time. And it's just started raining again, like it does every time I record. Uh, I can't sleep because I just slept a second ago. So I'm just going to wait a minute until it stops raining. So next up for the farm, I'm just going to place some observers facing into all of the stems. 
So you want the face actually looking at the stems like this. And that will mean that every time a pumpkin grows, the stem will update, which will update the observers. Now the observers are in place, I can start with the redstone. And it's actually extremely simple, so I've just placed a line of blocks behind the observers. And now I can place a line of redstone all the way behind all of these pistons and the observers as well. So now any time that any of these observers get an update, it's going to fire every single piston on this row. The problem is that it isn't 100% lossless. Occasionally the pumpkins will get trapped on the edge of the block here. But it's not really a big deal. I don't need a lot of pumpkins. I never really use them. So I'm not bothered if it's 100% lossless or not. I did build a pumpkin farm a long time ago. And it was extremely efficient. It didn't have any loss. But that was on my old world when it got corrupted. Um, I didn't really need that many pumpkins. I was getting so many pumpkins and melons. That was pretty much just throwing them away. I didn't know what to do with them all. So that's why I've decided to go for a little bit of a simpler design here. It's not as efficient. It's not as big. But I don't really need that many pumpkins and melons. But anyway, I've placed a little bit of glass at the front here. And that's just so the pumpkins don't fly over and land on top of the orange concrete. So now the first layer is done. I'm going to try to show you how to stack the farm. So it's going to be quite simple, I think. First of all, I'm just going to place a row of dirt on top of the other row of dirt. So you can see the row down here. And I'm just going to go one block above and place dirt all the way along. So this goes all the way from one end to the other. And now I can start placing some blocks around here to fit the water in. So I'm going to place an orange concrete on each side. I'm just going to place one there as well. And I'm going to place some solid blocks behind the pistons. And this is just to keep the water in place. So I'm going to place two buckets of water again like I did down here. So I'm going to place one on this side over here and one on the other side. And you don't want to place this on top of the piston because then it will waterlog the piston. So make sure you place it on the block on the side like that. So now I can place some temporary blocks above here again. And this is just so I can place the pistons a little bit easier. So if I jump down here I can place a piston here. So you just want to do it the same as below. So every time there's a piston below, you want to place it above as well. So it's going to go all the way across to the other side. Now I can just go along and hoe all of the dirt again. Uh, this is just so I can plant more pumpkins. And I'm going to use some bone meal again just to make them grow a little bit faster. And the last few steps now, I'm just going to place some observers facing into the stems again. All the way across to the other side. And then just a line of redstone all the way across the back again. And that's pretty much this section done as well. So I'm just building up with a few layers of glass again and this is just to make sure all of the items fall into the water stream and don't get stuck on the glass or the concrete over here. So that's two layers of the farm done and it only took me about three minutes to build each layer. So I think I'm going to build up by one more layer. Uh, you probably build this as high as you wanted to but I think three layers should be enough for me. So it started raining again I'm just going to quickly build the rest of this off camera and I'll be back once I've done that. I went ahead and finished the entire thing so you can see that I've got three layers for the pumpkins and if I head round to the other side I've also built all of the melon farm as well. I also added some lights at the top, it just looked a little bit dark in there so I've got some sea lanterns on this side and then some shroom lights over on the other side, that's just add a little bit of light in there. Also if I break into the side here. I've added a few levers so if I turn all of these downwards it just turns the farm off basically. It brings all of the pistons forwards and that means that the pumpkins can't grow and it's the same on the other side. So all of the pistons come forward so no melons can grow over here. So once these chests are full of pumpkins and the other one is full of melons I can just turn the farm off and then it'll stop producing them and then the items will just be getting built up on top of this hopper here. But for now I've just turned it back on and what I'm going to do next is just stay afk over here for a few hours and I'm going to see how many pumpkins I get. I'm going to need quite a lot if I'm going to check off all of the melons and pumpkins and the jack-o-lanterns and everything else as well. So I'm probably going to stay over here for two or three hours and then I'm going to come back and hopefully I've got all of the items that I'm going to need. It's the next day now and I stayed afk over here for a little bit yesterday. And I managed to get about five and a half stacks of pumpkins. 
and I'm not entirely sure how many melons I've not checked yet. There's quite a lot of melons here as well. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be enough to check off all of the items that I've got on the checklist. So I'm going to get some of these together and then I'm going to head over there. Also while I've been over in this area I've been using this rabbit farm a little bit that I built in the last episode. And you can see here that I've managed to get a full stack of rabbit's feet. So I'm going to collect these and take these over to the base as well. So for some reason they changed it so you actually have to carve all of these pumpkins now to create jack-o'-lanterns. So I've placed them all here, there's two stacks overall, there's some on the other side. I've used the shears to carve them all and now I just need to go around and break them all again. I've got quite a few items that I can check off the checklist here. So of course I've got all the pumpkins and all the melon stuff and all of this goes into the food chest. So you can see that I've already got one of each of these items in here. So I'll put another 63 in there and that's all of them checked off the checklist now. Next up I'll add the rabbit's feet and this goes into the mob drops. So I've got a piece of paper here and I'll just take that out and put the 64 rabbit's feet there. So that's a full stack of them. And finally I've got all of the stuff to go into the lighting chest. So that's up at the top here and this gets all of the items up to a full stack if I put all of these in. But for some reason on Bedrock Edition campfires don't stack but on Java Edition campfires stack to 64. So I can only collect one of these for now but if that ever gets updated I'll have to come back to this chest and get another 63 of them. But for right now that is the chest complete. So I've gone behind and I've turned the lamps on and that is the 15th chest that I've managed to fully complete in this series. So almost halfway there, overall there is 32 chests. I've checked off 15. And if you look in a lot of these chests, I've got a lot of the items like the glass. I only need one more item here. Um, the concrete and shulkers. I need to get all of these, but I actually have all of the materials to make the concrete. I just need probably a little bit more sand. I've definitely got enough shulkers and all of the different colours of dye. And in the mob drops over here, there's not too many more items I need either. I should be able to get the food items pretty easily, there's not too many more in there. Uh, stuff like this is going to be pretty hard, like all of the different potions. And then I need to do the splash potions and then the lingering potions as well. That's going to be really annoying to get all of those completed. I might start working on that soon. Also if I go over to the random blocks chest, I've got most of these items. A lot of the stuff that I need is to do with bees, like the beehives, the honey blocks and the honeycomb blocks. Uh, I also need the sponge and the wet sponge which is really easy to get and the snow and ice so that's not too hard to get either. But that's actually where I'm going to be ending today's episode. I've run out of time to record and I've got everything done that I wanted to get done. I'm not entirely sure what I'll be doing in the next video. I might go and make a bee farm over in the farming district if I can get a few more of these beehives. But I will be reading through all of the comments before I start recording the next episode. So if you've got any ideas for what you want me to build just let me know and I might pick one of your ideas to do. But yeah, this is the end of the video, so I'll see you all next time.